Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Thanks for joining. Today I'm going to show you how to do Mickey Mouse, a Christmas Mickey Mouse off the mat. We don't know what size yet, uh, so this is a special request. This person is doing an off the mat character for the first time, I believe, and so she didn't necessarily want it so big, um, but she left the size up to me and to also pick my own image, so from Design Space Images. So this little guy, what you wanna do is you wanna go into Images and type in Mickey Mouse and hit Enter, and this is what comes up. So um, I wanted to do something simple because uh, the more characters you have in there and you make it big, it's just a lot of slicing because like for instance, this one, you would have this whole wreath. I mean, it would get really, really big. So I wanted a single image. So I picked this one. I think I picked this one. Um, but you can see, I mean, there were some, oh no, maybe I picked this one. I think it was this one. Um, all right. So assuming you also like this image, <laughs> you would click on it and insert it. It's $1.99. If you have Cricut access like I do, it then you get 50% off, so it's a dollar. Yeah, so that's the one I picked. Okay, so let's look at this image. This image has an offset, so we don't need that. Um, so let's look at all the different layers over here. I mean, obviously we need the hat. Um, that's the red portion of the hat. Here's the white pom-pom. And if you don't like these colors, obviously you can just change it. So I could change this to a more white that I prefer, but that's up to you. Um, so here's the white, let's see, the black hat. I don't know, if, I don't, let me see. Oh, it looks like we do need that. So here's the scarf. So the red and then the white pants. Okay, his, this is his face and his gloves and the shoes. Here's our black image. Okay, so do you see in the, so we're looking at the right hand side panel, right? His black hat, this gives us the outline right here. That's, so everything else has an outline, right? Because if you get down to here, you see his pants have, has an outline and his shoes so we want the hat to have an outline as well but if you look at the black outline here it doesn't have the hat so what i what you should do is this is already selected hit your shift key select the black hat and weld it so now it becomes one this is our um outline you can click on it arrange and set move it backwards so you can kind of see it. What we don't need is we don't need these red outlines. So let's delete those. So this one you can delete. This one we can delete. And so we're left with the black outline. We're left with, I don't know the difference between these two. Um, I guess what you could, no, I'm not gonna make this complicated. I'm gonna, let's get rid of the two gray colors. So what you have is you have the black outline is also his body. And then here are all our white and red pieces. Okay, so we've got it. Um, let's see how big should we make him. He is broken up into pieces, so he's gonna look pretty flawless. Um, so let's make him, let's do him 30 inches. So 30 inches, he's 20, almost 22 inches across, right? So that's good because our cardstock is 12 by 12. We could only cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half, right? But I don't like to deal with half inches, so we're cutting 11, 11 by 11. So 11 plus 11 is 22, so that means we need two rows, so that's good. I think this is a good a good size. So um, 30 inches, okay, so type in height for 30 inches. Um, the width will, you know, um, readjust accordingly, so you only need to change the height or the, 
the measurement of one because it's locked, the other one will change accordingly. So let's zoom out over here. This is, um, I know my picture is over here, but in your bottom left-hand corner, you can zoom in and out. So I'm at 25% right now. So let's move this guy over to make sure you can see him. So let's start looking at these pieces. So here's the hat, right? Um, so let's ungroup everything. So our hat is good. Our hat's 6.6 .6 by 6.1, so we can cut that beautifully. Here is our white. Now I, I like this color white. I, I don't know if you wanna make his shoes a different color and the gloves a different color, but we can get to that in a second. So here's our white. You can separate this in two ways. I'm gonna show you contour later, so let me show you how to slice this out. So right now the white, it's saying it's gonna, it's one piece, it's one image, and it includes the pom-pom and the brim or the like furry part, right? You can technically cut this with your Cricut machine because it's less than um, 11 and a half by 11 and a half, but you have a lot of wasted space. So I do like to separate it because I end up using glitter cardstock and I like to use my scraps. So I'm gonna unlock this. And remember, we can slice two things at one time. So we're slicing the white with the square or the rectangle. When you're slicing and you wanna break something apart, like in this case, we wanna separate the pom-pom from the furry part down here, then you wanna make sure that whatever you're, whatever shape you're using covers what the, the whole piece that you wanna remove or move out of you know the attached image. Sorry, I'm <laughs> not explaining things well today. But basically, you either wanna do this, you cover, um, cover entirely the little pom-pom, okay? And then grab the two items and slice. So now you have your, um, your furry part here, and you can just get rid of all your slice results. We don't need any of that. And then here's the pom-pom. So what's nice is later when we when we go to cut it, you can move the pom-pom right here. So instead of like, what was it? Eight inches by six inches, this would only be eight inches by, oh, maybe it was a little bit more. But now it's more consolidated and then you can um, save the scraps for something else later. Okay, so we're slowly moving things out. Let's look at this face. So here, this is all itemized as one one image right so we're going to slice this out piece by piece so let's bring in our square and we can make it really big because we can use the same piece over and over right so i'm going to do this i'm going to do the shoe first and then you can see my square hits this mickey mouse but it doesn't matter as long as my mouse um, is only picking up the two items this is going to be the off-white color and my square then I can slice because it's not grayed out, right? So here I'm slicing one shoe out at a time, okay? And then I'm gonna bring this over and I'm gonna now do this shoe. Now this is right here, I don't want that. So I'm actually going to, let me move this out of the way and look at my mouse. My mouse is gonna come down and just grab a little bit of the off-white pieces and my square and I'm able to slice. So I'm in a lot of traffic, but. It, as long as your mouse only picks up two items, you can slice. Okay, so let me move this out of the way for a second. Let's get rid of all of our um, slice results that we don't need. And now the shoes, the shoes are small little pieces that we can cut with our Cricut. Okay, let's look at the rest of this. So let's bring this down and we could, um, you can even flip him upside down and let's do his face, okay? So his face is completely covered by this square. We're gonna slice that out. Okay, so here's his face, right? What I wanna do with the face, I always do this is we don't know where we're gonna have seams in our black background. So with the face, what I like to do is I like to duplicate it and then go to contour and hide all. And then I'm gonna turn this piece into black. 
So what's going to happen is now if there were seams coming down the, um, the eyes or the nose or the mouth, you're not going to see it anymore because you're going to have your, your top layer. I'm going to send this to the front so that you can see it. Then right behind it is going to be my black copy that's going to cover all the seams if there were any, right? And then both of these would then go and sit on top of over here. And so if there were any seams, you wouldn't see it at all because it would be covered by that black copy. So I love, I love that trick. Okay. If you want to, um, let's slice out these little pieces just so that we can, um, be really efficient with our cutting. Okay. And then we have, this little piece. So I'm going to go in this way, make sure I only grab two items and I'm just slicing with the same square, right? And then I'll move this one over here and then we get rid of our slice results all at one time in a little bit. Okay. And then this is our last slice of this color. Okay. So let's get rid of this. Let's put together all our slice results in one area so we can delete it in a second. Okay, so that we can delete. So here are all our white pieces or off-white that are now um, individual pieces. Okay, let's see what else we have left. We have the red left. So here's the red. So what I like about the scarf is you see these two pieces, they're connected. So really the scarf is three, four, five, six pieces. Um, and same thing with this. So these two things, I'm going to want to slice them out so that we can consolidate it and make it really efficient when we go to cut it. And then here is this. Okay. Um, okay. So this we know is 30 inches. Give me a second. I'm gonna just make him small for one second because I wanna to go to the make it screen so you can see. If we don't do anything to this, this is what it's gonna look like. So let's go to make it. And the difference between slicing up all the pieces and not, right? So here this, I can move this in here. So if I put down a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, I have a lot of um, scrap, like usable scrap that I can save and use for next time. I could even move this like this, move it up to the corner and move this in, right? So this now takes up five by nine. So next time I have this little piece and then I have all of this to use. Okay. Here are my white pieces. So because we, um, cut this up and it's not all attached or grouped together, this is the scarf. You see how it, because we didn't slice it out, it moves as one piece. So it's kind of okay in this case because we have all these other pieces that we can move around it. So for instance, this I can put over here. So I could actually still make this pretty efficient, but we can make it way better if they were individual pieces, right? But in this case, it's actually not that bad. So you could do something like this and this would all cut. Here's the face and the shoes. So actually, I think the shoes can fit on the other page. You can click on the three dots, move object, and we can move it over here. So the shoe can cut like this. So you can rotate things, move things. Um, this shoe could probably fit with the face. So move object and move it with the face. Oh, it's a perfect fit, right? And the next time for usable, actually, yeah, I guess we could do that. Um, you have all of this to use for another project. Okay, here is our black. This is wrong, right? Because we need to resize it to 30 inches and slice it up, but we'll get back to that in a second. Here is the copy of the face, but all in black, so it would cover all the seams. But here's our red because we didn't slice this out 
this red is gonna be like this. So for next time, I mean, you're gonna to have to cut out this scrap right here and this scrap. I, I really don't like that. Plus, well, I guess, you know, let's move the red pants. In this case, maybe it's not that bad. <laughs> maybe we could fit everything. So it's up to you, like how efficient you wanna be. Um, and I guess, you know, kind of like how cheap you are. <laughs> so I can move this over and I can fit the pants here. So that's not too bad. Let's move the hat as well. So it's not too bad. It still all takes up. Let me see. We want to make sure this all fits in one. So this is really close. Maybe if I flip it over, does that work? So it all fits in one, but your usable scrap, it's like a little bit here, a little bit here. If you, um, you know, again, it just depends on how efficient you wanna be, but at least it all fits on one page. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel back out. I'm not going to slice up the scarf because I've already shown you how to slice things up, but we're gonna work on our black background. So we need to make this guy 30 inches, right? So change it to 30. So here he is. And let me move all of this over a little bit more so we have space. Okay, so here's our black background. What you wanna do is, obviously he's way too big for us to cut, right? And you know that from looking over here. I mean, we know that because he's 30 inches, but you also have this warning sign over here that tells you, hey, this, this image is too big. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to shapes, bring in a square, and we know because this is 22 inches wide, we're gonna need two rows of squares coming down. He's 30 inches high, so we're gonna need three, oh no, two columns and three rows. So we need six squares total. So here's our first square. We're gonna change it to 11 by 11 because I don't like dealing with half inches. So here's our first one. Let's just put it right here, okay? So we're gonna use our position feature. We're gonna change, we're just gonna round to the nearest whole number. So 23.7 becomes 24, and 1.2 becomes one. So basically what this is, is your X coordinate is the one running across. We're saying go over 24 units, and then go down one unit. Here's the beginning of our square. Duplicate that square, and then if you put it close enough to this one, you don't have to do any math, you just round. I guess rounding is math, but anyway. 35.2 becomes 35, 1.1 becomes one, and I'll show you the math behind it. So this, remember, it started at 24, right? So it's at 24 units, plus 11, 24 plus 11 is 35, and so there is where our X starts. What's good about this and why I do it this way is because all your squares then are completely flushed. So when we go to piece this back together, all the edges go butt up right up to each other. It, it gives to a more seamless project because everything is so close, you're not gonna be able to see any light through it, and it's right up next to each other. You don't want it overlapping, right? Because then it's like, where, where does it stop and end? Um, and you don't want any gaps. So this makes sure that all your pieces are completely flushed with each other. Okay, so now that we know these two squares are flushed, hit your shift key, this is already selected. Hit your shift key and grab this square. So now they're both selected, right? We're gonna duplicate. And we're gonna put it just right next to the top ones. So then we go up here and change this to 24 and this to, oops, sorry, 24 tab 12, okay? And these two are still, uh, oh, I didn't hit, like I can, there's a visible gap. Um, you need to hit tab to get out of it to make sure that it, it goes. Okay, these two squares are still selected, so duplicate and put it right here, okay? And then this one is already at 24, but this needs to be 23. And now we have six perfectly flush squares. And you're thinking this tail is sticking out, that's okay. Scroll down over here on your left hand or right hand side panel, grab your black background and go to arrange and send to the front. 
And now we're gonna zoom in to see where we're slicing everything, okay? What we don't want is something like, let me show you, and I'll zoom in so that you can really see it. Um, what we basically want is we want to break up, slice up Mickey Mouse into six sizable pieces. What we don't want is something like this, where the pom-pom all of a sudden is in one piece here, two pieces here, three pieces here, and four pieces here. That little pom-pom should be one square, right? It shouldn't be broken up into pieces. So you just wanna make sure that when you're doing this, that um, we're cutting it into big chunks, okay? So in this case, we wanna move this over because we want the tail to all be in one piece. So here is this, so this is gonna slice up here. So this square right here is a big slice. It goes up the leg and pretty much his whole bottom side. This is one piece, this is another piece. That looks good. This piece here, this is one big piece, this is another big piece, still looking good. Now his, this piece I think can fit in one. So what we can do is do this. We can grab these two squares Grab them both, okay, and let's move it over and see if we can slice, well, it's not moving. I think that we can get this on one cut, so let's see, or one square. So instead of six pieces, I think we can slice up Mickey into five big pieces. Let's see if it will move, okay. Oh, it won't, oh, he's just a little bit too big. But we can slice him more like, <sighs> maybe something like, oh, wait a minute, his ear is black. We could slice it like right here, then the hat will cover the slice, the seams, okay. So I adjusted this, right? I So now I can change this. I know this was um, 24 and one, I think. Oops, I don't want that, shoot, sorry. Okay, I wanna change this to right around here. So I'm gonna change this to 27, there. Okay, so now I know it's all still, um, flushed with each other, okay? But you, so you can change that. Um, I think we're good. So let me zoom back out. Okay, and let's slice one square at a time, okay? So let's slice this one square at a time and the image. And we're just gonna make our way all the way around Mickey. So I'm gonna slice in the middle and I'm still only grabbing two items at one time. If you make the mistake of grabbing more than two items, and that's a glitch right there, I wouldn't worry about it. Just Let's just move all the pieces as we slice it. Oh my gosh, not that piece, sorry. Undo that if that happens. I wanna grab this hat, here we go. This goes right here, okay. Let's grab this side and slice. If you grab more than two items, and I'm gonna do that right here, okay? So I'm gonna grab one, two, and I'm gonna go in and grab this side as well. You see slicing is grayed out. So you know you've picked up too many items. So let's grab these two items and slice. Let's grab these two items and slice. And I think now we've sliced up everything. So here's one little piece, here's a Big, big piece. It's nine by 11. Here's this piece. And then here's this piece. And then everything else, all your slice results, we can just delete. So you can just grab it like this. Oops, sorry. Let me redo that grab. Grab it all like this and delete. Okay? So I like to rearrange it here and piece it together because then I, 
When I take it off my mat, I know exactly where the pieces go. And if you wanted to, you can kind of reassemble on here to see where all your seams are gonna be, if you wanted to do that. But I don't do that, I'm done. Like once I've cut my seams, I'm gonna go and save this. And I don't wanna save it just yet because it, there's been a glitch in the system where all of a sudden your project disappears for a day. So I don't wanna lose it right now. Um, but now you have your black image cut up into pieces that your Cricut can cut. Everything is sliced up. So now when we go to make it, you're gonna see everything now. Um, so here's our white pieces again. Oh, you know what? The white, uh, maybe you should do it like this. So the next time you have all this usable space, whatever, <laughs> it's up to you. Here is the cream colored stuff. Um, you, I would move it again. Here is all our black background pieces. Now this looks like we could consolidate a little bit. Let's see where we can put. We can move this. I mean, this is where I, you know, you look at this and see where does it fit. So that ear can fit over here or here. Right, I'm just trying to save space. And you can move that however you want to. Um, This hat, I don't know, it's kind of chunky. Let's see if it can fit anywhere. Move object. And, oh, you know what? It might fit here. So let's move that. Or we can move it this way. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So the black we went from one, two, three, four, five. We saved one sheet. Not bad. And then the red we know all fit on one. So it's not that much cutting um, once you, if you can consolidate and move everything and be really efficient. All right, so for the person that requested this, I hope I made it simple for you and I can't wait to see your project. For anyone else, I mean, I definitely read my comments on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. So if you not only wanna give me feedback, but you wanna do your special request, I am there to help you with your project. So post that down you know, on any of those accounts. Um, and you can also email me at ann at theuselesscrafter.com. So that's ann, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. Um, but post your comments first here and then send me more information if you need to. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.